Hello. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Sometimes I mumble. Thank you, Aurora. Yeah, I'm going to cheat a little bit um, because wrapping this is a little nerve wracking. So I thought maybe for the tutorial we would stick to something um, simple. It's not perfect. Let me turn myself down over here. It's all about the process. Shh, don't tell anyone, Debbie. So anyway, um, as some more are joining, my name is Michelle and I'm from Washington Island and I started doing tumblers about a little over a year ago. Um, I have my own shop here that I sell them at. And I just like to show people the process. I'm not a professional at these videos and I might miss things and in my head I want to tell you all this stuff. Feel free to jump in and ask questions afterwards. If I miss anything, feel free to message me. Um, but today we're going to work on a chevron ombre. I've done a few. I've done this one and this one. And recently have done this one that has no flaws in it but lo and behold when I try to do tutorials usually is when they go chaotic but um, it is a style of cup that you can't properly prep your cup if you're a fanatic about prepping your cup I am for the most part um, however it to me feels like it's pretty secure on there. And you can scratch the silver um, to prep it. You just have the scratched metal look in the background. I did not prep my cup. The only thing I did was wipe it down with acetone and then applied my chevron. Your chevron decal can be found in design space. Um, I know there's a few out there that um, are in Etsy. Um, Danelle Laws comes to mind. She has a tapered chevron that she sells, which is exactly what I use to achieve these. Um, when I tried to do the 20 ounce, I had to finagle a little bit um, and tweak it. So I wrapped a string around my cup to get the measurements. And it should be about 9.2 and then measure up and down and that's how you want to measure your chevron decal and then like I said I've already wrapped it because that's half the battle is getting it on your cup and that's just a waste of everybody's time to watch me do that but um, I'm now gonna spray paint it because I think my glitter is gonna be a little more vibrant with a white background and then we're going to do two birds with one stone because while my paint is wet, I'm also going to add glitter. So I'm going to tell you right now, the glitters that I'm using um, is Drive Through Daiquiri by Mr. Nola. Um, just a regular Recollections. Um, neon Orange, I believe. And Magic School Bus by The Glitter Guy. Um, I try all sorts of companies and whatnot. But these three colors seem to sing to me today. So those are the three that we're going to go with. Again, I'm going to go outside and spray paint my cup. 
just using a Fleet Farm 99 cent white base. Thank you. And now, while it's still wet, oh, and I should tell you that since I went up and down with the, with the 631 vinyl, see, I told you I forget some things, um, I left a little start on the edge. If you've got a pattern that you don't have, um, even on the bottom, too, there's some places for me to pull that tape after I get the glitter on. If you don't have spots, if you're just doing like something in the middle of your cup or whatever, um, put like a glue dot on there, some indication after you put the glitter on so that you know where that spot is so you can dig it out. Um, if you're just doing a peekaboo with spray paint, you can usually see where your decal is, but with glitter, Pretty much buries your 631 vinyl and now I'm just adding my my first color my pink and in my mind sectioning off my cup into thirds on the wet paint haven't used any adhesive yet Hello from Atlanta. Wish my comments would show over here. My tech 12 year old is not here to help me with that. All right, just preserving my pink, moving on to the orange while my paint is still wet. Again, in my mind, just sectioning it off. I apologize if I make this look easy. Thank you for answering questions, Aurora. It's hard for me to follow the questions. Multitasking, I should be a professional at that, but I am not. All right, savoring my orange. Moving on to my Magic School Bus Yellow. Still using the wet paint. Obviously, you don't want your paint dripping. I just put a nice coat, like I said, just to make my colors a little more vibrant. You don't have to. I could have glittered over the top of it. That's just what I do. Hello, Michelle. get it to work yet. 
So, we have our cup sectioned off into threes. But that's not enough coverage. So, save my yellow here. I missed the Mod Podge question. I am not going to use Mod Podge. Um, if you go fast enough, Lisa, um, I think I got the same amount of coverage for each color. If I would have diddled it a little around, it would have dried towards the top. But still, um, just makes use of that wet paint instead of waiting for it to dry and then putting on adhesive. I am a Loctite user, so um, if you are a Mod Podge user, you would at this point have to wait for it to dry. Um, I'm not sure of how Mod Podge works, but... I do use Loctite, and therefore I don't have to wait for the next layer. You're right, uh, glossy paint does spray or does dry slower. Normally, what I do as a base coat on my cups is use a um, a flat, or sometimes even a primer. It doesn't have to have any shine to it at all. But moving on, I'm going to spray the pink part and only the pink part. Again, we are using Mr. Nola's, and I'm spraying over my garbage can off to the side here, and just that pink part. Spraying with Loctite. Applying another coat. Now it's got enough coverage. Any questions up to this point? Now I'm going to spray the orange again. get a quick ombre lesson too today. It's enough coverage there too, I would say. yellow. Yeah, these are my go-to colors. They're always going to turn out. Every time I make a cup with these colors, it sells right away. There you have it. Now our cup sectioned off. And now we're going to begin the ombre process. Which I'll try not to make long and tedious, and I'll try not to go really, really fast, too. Starting with the pink, I'm going to sprinkle mold this time, and I'm going to spray it right in the crease, and I'm going to go up with the pink. Spraying over my garbage can, again with Loctite. 
Um, these are deli sheets that I'm using underneath. Kind of cool because they already have the crease in them. So folding them in half, you don't, it's already in there. And nothing sticks to them, they're awesome. I love the ombre. I live on an island, so the beach ombre is my specialty. All right, so I sprayed in the crease and I'm holding my hand way up in the air and I'm not being facetious and sarcastic, but I'm at least 14 inches in the air. And I'm just sprinkling it like it's my salt on the dinner plate. And hopefully you can see where, I, where I'm sprinkling it. I'm sprinkling it right where they're creased together. And you'll see the line just start to dissolve. Be patient. Be very patient. That's the trick with ombre. Just sprinkle, like I said, like it's your salt on the dinner plate and slowly make that line disappear. Spray it a little bit more. Again, way up in the air. Hopefully you can see on the camera just how lightly that's coming out. And it's chevron underneath. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to show you that it can be. And there. And now I'm going to take the orange and go over that little section right there that I just did with pink. I have learned with ombre for the most part, the lighter color likes to be the finisher. So the orange should be on top of the pink and the yellow will be on top of the orange when it's complete. All right, again, spraying over that little midsection. Not a lot, because it just needs to be drizzled. Going back over with our orange. Ever so lightly. See how our line disappeared? Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to peel that tape off from behind. So that's one way to do an ombre, is to overlap the colors. Another way is to mix those two colors. Like I said, I live on an island, so the beach ombre is my specialty. And I'll show you one. So I make hundreds of these. Um, but because I make so many of them, I mix the two glitters together. So I mix the, the um, silver with the blue and then this light blue with the dark blue and that's what I do the midsection with. Um, however, when you mix the glitters like that, you may waste a lot if you don't do a lot of tumblers like this one. If I would have mixed the orange and the pink together, I probably would have ended up throwing some out. <laughs> so... I do the overlap technique for the ones that I'm just doing one of. You can also hold your tumbler at an angle and just let your glitter drop down ever so slightly over to the, in, into the next color. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna spray a piece of blue from there to there, right in the midsection. <laughs> and we're gonna overlap the orange up to the yellow because the yellow is the lighter. I'm kind of holding it at an angle. And this opening's not so big in these kinds, so I'm holding my glitter a little bit closer to my tumbler than what I did with the, the ones with the big holes in it. But still just sprinkling it. And watch our line disappear. I'm going to do it one more time. Again, 
again, just spraying my Loctite in the midsection. Sprinkling the orange up to the yellow. Actually, I'm going to go up a little bit higher. And now I'm going to come back down with the yellow onto the orange. And then we should have a completed ombre. And then we can move on to the next step. Thank you all for watching today. It's kind of nerve-wracking, but... It's funny. You're harmless. All right. One more time. Let's do this one more time. Yellow onto the orange. Looking pretty good so far, though. Again, I'm going to hold this really high up in the air because the holes are way bigger. I don't want it to gush out. Oh, of course my phone would have to go up. Yellow onto the orange. How's that looking? Thank you, Aurora. I think that's pretty good. All right, let's get to the good stuff here. So, again, you recall I haven't been drying it in between layers, which is fine. Now I'm going to go outside and I'm going to seal it just like this. I'm going to seal it with this. Actually, I got more in this one, so I'm going to use this one. But any clear sealer. And I'm going to spray the whole cup. a layer of sealer on it. <laughs> that's the tape under, or that's the vinyl underneath. That's our chevron design underneath that you see. That's what we're going to pull off in a minute or two. I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. <clears throat> you see this little piece right here? I think it's okay. Um, I'm just going to let that dry for a few seconds. Is there any questions? <clears throat> um, I don't think I put this cup in this group or not, but this is the same effect, the same peekaboo effect, obviously, but not chevron but i ombre a cup and i put epoxy on it and then i cut out vinyl we can talk about it while we're waiting for the other one to dry so i cut out my fireworks and the people and then i put the fireworks on there spray painted it and then pulled the decals off. Kind of what we're doing with the chevron. That one will be a different video because I already started it. So I'm going to turn these into this. 
later on. Okay, let's get back to this one. So I've let it dry, what, maybe a minute or two. It's still pretty, oh, it's, don't touch it, Michelle. It's still pretty wet. Still pretty wet. I'll mess it up if I keep it up. Anywho, it's not messed up. Let's see what it looks like if I start pulling. Usually I would let it dry probably 30 minutes. Then you just pull off your decal. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's how you get that effect. But I'm not going to peel it off quite yet because it's not dry. But again, I just wanted to go through the process with you. And I'll be pulling all of that tape. See the tabs? There's tabs down here. I will be pulling all of that off. Um, I'm afraid if I pull it off right now while it's wet, some of that glitter will go into the silver area. And then I'm in trouble. And then it won't be clean like that. So that's the effect that we're going for. When I pull those tabbies off, the silver will be underneath. And then you can seal it and epoxy it. There you have it. Thanks for watching. You're welcome. Hopefully I can do some more of these videos. I love doing them. They're a bit nerve wracking at first, but um, if you all learn something, that's what it's all about. Did you see it, Aurora? Yeah, I'll just keep it stainless. You are welcome, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you soon. I will upload it for anybody who has missed it. It'll be uploaded onto my, um, obviously, this page and onto my own YouTube. But again, thanks for watching.